These are the day stairs that lead up into the monk's dormitory at Cleve Abbey. At the bottom of these stairs is the cloister where the monks would have gone to around to do their daily work. But this is where they would have slept. And if we pan around, it's a huge room which from the 13th century when the abbey was founded would have been open like this with all the monks sleeping with their beds. Um, there'd be no partitions. By the 15th century, they'd started to partition the room off. But if we, if we take a little walk, you can see every so often, we've got quite a few windows, but we also have little fireplaces. Um, you can see the top left-hand corner, we've got some fire, a fireplace there. And if we come round this way, so back over where the stairs are, these are the day stairs because there are night stairs, okay, as opposed to the night stairs, which would have led from this door down here on the left. And the night stairs took the monks straight into the church for their night, night prayers, which they're expected to get up every night to go to the church and, do, and pray. We have another little fireplace here. But this is the only place, um, because, because it's been preserved, because we have a roof on it, because we have a floor we can, we can um, stand on safely. This is the only place you can really come and visualise what it would have been like in a 13th century monk's dormitory. So life for a monk in the 13th century was hard, hard work, but they had certain luxuries that the everyday person outside of the abbey wouldn't have had. And one of those luxuries was flushing toilets. So we're in the dormitory where the monks would have slept. And this door here would have led to the latrine block. So basically a toilet block. And they would have had running water, um, so they could have come, it's an ensuite, isn't it? It's a 13th century ensuite, dormitory maybe, but they had their own flushing toilets. Um, so water was, uh, was diverted from the River Washford nearby and would have, would have washed the sewage away. So some of the monks took to decorating their part of the dormitory, so it wouldn't have all looked the same. And um, where we have the window, window seats were created and tiles were put down which looked very similar, you might recognise some of them from the refectory. Um, I'm not sure how they'd, whether they got the tiles because they were extras and left over or whether they'd have made them themselves, but they obviously took pride in their part of the dormitory and wanted it to be a little bit more personal. So we've just visited the monks' dormitory, but there were in fact places for the senior monks that were, they didn't sleep in the dormitory. Here's one example. They would have had this living space here. The, the floor is probably much, much later because this was also used as a farmhouse for a while. They would have had quite a large living space. They would have had a separate bedroom Smaller, but still a fair size, and to top it all, they had a private toilet. Well, this is the site of the first refectory where the monks would have eaten. Um, the, the building itself is gone, we're in a modern building, but the, this has been built to protect the floor. So take a look at this tiled floor. Really amazingly preserved full of heraldry. So this is the second refectory on the site. So we've seen the, the floors, uh, floor of the first refectory. This is the second grand one built in the 15th century. It would have been a bit more decorated than this. It's been whitewashed. But the far end wall where we have just a white space now, would have had a massive painting of the crucifix on. Now, monks had to eat in silence, but one monk was allowed to speak, and that was the one who would be reading the scriptures during, during the meal. And he would have done that from a raised pulpit up here, above where the fireplace now is. That no longer exists. At the beginning of the staircase, up to that pulpit does exist. 
we pan up to the roof, it is so well carved, so ornate and beautiful. And this just shows that the, the austere life of the monk over the centuries actually became grander and grander as living standards grew outside of the abbeys, living standards within abbeys also grew as the monks wanted a better standard of life and the abbots wanted a better standard of life. Halfway up we see the stone carved panel with the name Dovel in there. That was the abbot who reconstructed this gatehouse in the 16th century. And if we pan up we can see the carving of Christ. The figures that normally would have been alongside Christ, Saint Mary, Virgin Mary and Saint, uh, Saint John are missing but Christ is still there and it's fairly unusual to still have um, the figures there but it could just be because they were so high up off the ground they weren't destroyed during the Reformation. But let's take a little walk through the gatehouse because it's a building in itself, it's not just um, for the gate and we can see evidence of there being two floors here. If you have a look, we have a slight lintel in the, um, in the stonework, you have fireplaces and you have doorways. 